at three stations. We're a very small place. Um, you know, I just uh, one guy trying to make a living out here. And then we have a bar area. And in our bar area, we have a kegerator that is uh, completely complimentary. And we have, you know, different boozes and there's a wine fridge. And then for the kids and stuff, sodas, water, skaterade, stuff like that. And there's like a little coffee area over there. And uh, that's pretty much it. Well, I would come get my hair cut there. There was a place like that. That's awesome. But yeah, it's a pretty, uh, people like it. That's for sure. Do you think that, well, I mean, from my experience, if you pay this, because I've had some similar things go on, then they probably will have the EEOC come in next and say, give us $100,000. There's folks yeah, that make a living off this. I, I, I know. I, I, I know that's going to happen, damn it. Uh, we, the, the young lady and I, I had sent her an apology. I didn't want any, I, the initial newspaper, um, I told them, don't put her name in there, you know, because I didn't want any kind of repercussions for that. And, uh, cause it wasn't on any state, state papers, but they did it anyway. And I sent her a, an apology on Facebook. I said, I don't even know you, you know? And I said, for whatever reason you felt you were uh, wronged and I feel bad about that. And you, you know, you took the course of action that you felt was necessary and, uh, you know, whatever. And she responded by, uh, hopefully what she said, it will, uh, well, you know, will, will help me out. But she said she was only coming here to make sure that I was up to standards I knew to cut her boyfriend the week after because she demands perfection in her haircuts. So I don't know, man. Then there was some other choices. Sounds like a really sick power trip. And I'd say to this young woman, do you understand this is social engineering by very sophisticated foundations on record to break up the family, turn everybody against each other? And, yeah, and, and you know, absolutely. there's called being cool and minding your own business. Uh, so what if guys want a place to get their hair cut and drink beer? Yeah, I mean, Women yeah, have all their places. Do you really want men coming in to where you're at? I'll give you a great example. Uh, we do a lot of wedding parties here. And, uh, you know, guys getting married, brings in his whole crew. We lock the doors, close the blinds, we're reading Playboy, smoking cigars, drinking beer, doing shots, swearing, farting, whatever guys want to do. If, uh, say, a woman were to come in, they would immediately lose that vibe. They would immediately have to act gentlemanlike. They wouldn't be able to swear, drink, fart, read the Playboys, they'd have to hide things. And immediately the entire atmosphere of the shop would change. Uh, you know what I mean? So they, just because it wouldn't have anything to do with me, it would have to do with them. They would feel... Like they had to act a certain way, like they're in public now, you know, when the blinds are closed. And they, sure, and sometimes I go out with my buddies and, 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 you know, if the girls go, it's a totally different vibe, a totally different yeah. evening. And, and, and so, uh, I mean, can are guys allowed to be alone? That's what no, this comes down to. Just, are we allowed to have any male culture? It doesn't seem like it. <laughs> I know when a guy comes here with his girlfriend, he never brings her the second time. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Well, I mean, I've seen similar places. I know they're popular. I know they're growing. So I guess that's the type of place it was. Uh, and it just, you know, Seattle has told city employees, you'll be fired if you bring a brown paper bag to work. Uh, we wow. see this as a symbol of hate. No, no one ever said a brown paper bag was a symbol of hate. No one ever said it, it's just about them being able to ban whatever they want. And I would just say to this young lady in the state, so... If I want to go to Curves or I want to go to any other women's only thing or to a women's church group, then we can find them if you don't let me in. I mean, is this really where women want to go? I, 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 I don't know. I guess it might be. I, I certainly hope not because that's a shame. Somebody told me that you have to call children purple penguins in school now. They can't yes. be associated as boys or girls. They was calling them alive on the air. 15,000 million viewers right now. <laughs> Come on in and say hi. Uh, but yeah, that's what I've heard. I mean, you can't, there's no individuality anymore. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's just not an America that's, uh, it, it's not America anymore. You know, it's incredible. Well, I mean, what it is is a cult uh, brainwashing facility. I uh, because, you know, first they said a decade ago at the universities, we need to ban he, she, boy, girl, uh, man, woman, husband, wife. Because if you're not a husband or a wife, it's hurtful. If you're not a boy or a girl, it's hurtful. As if you existing, you see, hurts them. It's the opposite of tolerance. They're intolerant, and so now schools across the country are getting rid of the word boy and girl, he or she, and you've got to use weird prefixes or purple penguin because they say we've got to talk like they say. I mean, it's, it's so crazy, crazy, I can't even believe it. I, 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 I heard it was the first time I heard it yesterday, and it's, 
and I, I did not respond to it. It's insane. Well, we're gentlemen, and so we like to be nice to people. And, I, and so we start using the words they say, and it sets a precedent to where now we're basically slaves to it. The answer is not being politically correct. And see, that's why I think she showed up. That's why a lot of these feminists do this around the country and the world is, let's face it, she doesn't like a place with leather barber chairs and guys reading Playboy and drinking beer. That's chauvinistic. That's bad. That's evil. And that's why this happened to you. But I think in the end, they're going to probably change the law. They're going to probably back off of this because it makes them look so stupid. And I would guess you're going to end up getting a lot more business. You know, I hope so. And I hope I can aid in that fight uh, against this. You know what I mean? I, uh, a lot of your listeners actually contacted me. And uh, they said, you know, you would be a good uh, place to you know, fight, I guess, you know, because that's really what it is, a fight. And uh, I can't do it by myself. I mean, I'm just one guy, you know what I mean? But uh, I think uh, right now it's uh, it's a hot topic, and I'm at the forefront, you know, one of the people at the forefront of it, and I certainly want to do my part to have this not become uh, the norm, you know? I want to get rid of that. So, Well, the harassment of small businesses in this country by these people is just getting completely out of control and insane. Now, the EEOC is saying that if someone has a secret disability that you don't know about, they don't tell you about, that they can later claim you hurt them and their disability, even though you weren't aware of it, and then pay damages. So this is meant to sabotage our industry. How are we supposed to operate as a country where these type of totalitarian rules? You can't. You absolutely cannot do it. You just can't. They, they, they said everything against you. There's no way that you can make it you know what i mean i, I can't even, it's it's just absolutely ridiculous and it gets worse every day every single day it gets worse and worse well you tried to be sweet to her you tried to be a gentleman i think the answer is stop being i mean still be gentlemanly obviously this is my opinion but start being a little more aggressive and i would have pulled a camera out i know you're a nice guy business owner and i'd say lady there's women's places all over that don't do men's hair are mm -hmm. you saying they're bad too you know why are you starting a fight with me yeah. Uh, and that's what it comes down to. I think when you did apologize, when you were nice, she took that as weakness, wanted to push it, probably has got a lawyer, and, uh, you know, there's not a lot of jobs in this country, so, you know, maybe maybe you're going to be bankrolling her future. I mean, I, uh, I'm not saying that's what's happening. That potentially could be happening, and we need to put an end to this. I uh, certainly am worried about that. I certainly would not want that to happen. I'd burn this place to the ground before that happened, <laughs> but to be honest with you, I... Uh, you know, I go to work every day. You know what I mean? I believe everybody should, should have a job, should do what they're supposed to do. You know, every one of my family has worked for generations and generations back. We, uh, you know, my family's been business owners in this city for God, five generations back from ice cream stops in uh, 1921 all the way up to my barber shop now. And, uh, you know, for somebody to try to tear it down, you know, that doesn't, I don't know anything about her personal life, but, you know, from her actions, it, it, it clearly... You know, it says it all. It speaks volumes. Actions speak volumes, I think. Well, all over Europe, especially in, in England, they have men and women's clubs. And women go after work and have drinks and smoke cigarettes or whatever and, and read magazines and talk about women's stuff because they want to be around women. Sure. And then men yeah. have their clubs, and then they have clubs where both men and women go to them. That's just normal. Why do you think there's this attack on just normal human activity? You know, I, you know, I don't know, but I, I'm... I made a point the other day that it just seems like they're they're intentionally starting these fights with us. Um, you know, a couple of weeks ago there was that uh, uh, some sort of award show where Caitlyn Jenner won an award uh, for you know, being a, a hero, and they a Marine lost the award, and it just seemed to me like they just invented that whole scenario. You know what I mean? Like, why a Marine? They because the certain group of people are going to get pissed off when a, when a Marine is, you know what I mean? And a certain other group of people are going to be upset if she didn't. And they, they're just pitting each other against each other all the time. And, and you know, the blacks versus the whites, the gays versus the straights, the, the whoever, you know, the guys versus the girls, the penguins versus the purple people. You know? it's, <laughs> it's just, uh, that, that's what's going on. I mean, it's, to me, I preach it all day long on my show. If, if any of my guys, can tell you, you know, I, I, I preach. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I would guess you're a live and let live, probably a libertarian type guy too. The thing is libertarians and patriots are some of the most open people out there, but we want to be able to live our lives like we want. 
That's what real freedom is, not adopt this new totalitarianism. We got about three minutes left. We'll obviously, uh, Johnny Interval, get an update from you as this unfolds. I know you're going on Fox News and some other channels today. But I would just point out when you're on there, this is a culture war. Uh, if, if, if they can make men's barbershops accept women, uh, then they can make us accept anything. I love women, but women deserve to have, you know, their own places like curves. And, uh, I mean, you know what to say, but just say that uh, this is part of a war on men having any any area. I mean, the new James Bond, they're saying, uh, is going to be politically correct and apologize for being a chauvinist. Uh, not in this new movie, but the next movie. I mean, they are really just attacking men being men. It, it's crazy. It really is, man. I mean, I don't know what's next, but it ain't going to be good. <laughs> you know, it ain't going to be good. At least on the path we're going. And uh, like I said, I hope I can aid in the fight for this. You know, I, I certainly intend to. Well, good right. job speaking out. A lot of folks would just cower and hand everything over and apologize and just say, here's all my money, here's my car, put your kids yeah. in the street, worship her, slit your throat, you know, give her buckets of blood, and just say, I'm sorry, and that wouldn't be enough. But uh, you've stood up, mybarbier.com or barberstandsup.com. Uh, John, we got about a minute and a half closing comments. Uh, uh, thanks for having me on, for sure. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm definitely a supporter of the show. We'll continue to do that. Uh, I'm sure you gained some listeners, you know, if you didn't already have enough. <laughs> you got some more today uh, from uh, just my guys. This is uh, certainly a lot of people chiming in on my in my news feed. Um, that's really it. Yeah, go to barberstandup.com. Uh, if you want to help me fight these injustices, uh, I'm going to need your help, you know, so. Anyway. Well, we've got to stand together or hang separate, and whenever you're in Pennsylvania, uh, nearby Pittsburgh, I know Please next time I'm there, I'm going to, I'm going to drive out to your town and get my hair cut, brother. You stop in. Any of your listeners come in, man. We'll take care of you on the house first time. All right, brother. That's awesome. Uh, we'll talk to you again as this unfolds. Johnny, thanks for reaching out to us. Thank you, sir. You have a Absolutely. Great day. God bless you. you. Folks, we are not buying into the war with men against women and vice versa. We're not buying into the black versus white. But the social engineers in the Democratic Party are doing it. And just like the Democrats controlled things when they ran the Ku Klux Klan, they are running things today. And a lot of these women that are going along with this are useful idiots and mean well. And they, and they believe this is their coming of age event to stand up to the men. And it's truly sickening. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Joseph Farah. An icon of independent media will be joining us in about three minutes. Then Pastor Chuck Baldwin on the fall of religious freedom in America. We can really mark it as September 2015. It's, it's here. He'll be joining us for a full hour. We'll open the phones up on this Friday edition. I'll be back this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central time with the Sunday broadcast. The nightly news is tonight, 7 o'clock Central. Uh, briefly... We fund a lot of our operation with high quality goods and services. And My Patriot Supply has been a sponsor for three, four years for us. They are hands down the best quality storable food at the most competitive prices. For two years, I've been going back and forth with them about InfoWars Select, an idea I had of just their best lines, their freshest food, private labeled for InfoWars. And it's InfoWars Select, and we had their CEO on yesterday. They're one of the biggest food companies now. They're so successful because they're so competitive. And he, he said what he said to me off air. He kind of didn't like saying it. Yes, we've given you the authorization to sell this at the lowest price they've ever sold food, period. They're already very competitive. But in two weeks, this has to end because of their contracts with other major companies. And we'll still have an incredibly low price with InfoWars Select. It'll be matching whatever their lowest price is. We still sell My Patriot Supply products, the exact same products, at just a little bit more money at InfoWarsStore.com. It's just InfoWars Select is their full spectrum of food, private labeled to InfoWars. So go to InfoWarsSelect.com or go to InfoWarsStore.com and you can go right in and get it for My Patriot or you can get it from InfoWars. And we basically, some of the food packs are a little, little bit different mixes, a little bit different you know, here and there. Some of it's the exact same thing, but, but it's all super high quality and the exact same weight, the exact same uh, purchasing power. And then the small profit we're making, because that's what I believe in in capitalism, is selling more at a lower price. 
and then you dominate the market, then you're more successful, then you can fund your operation. We're true capitalists. So InfoWars Select at InfoWarsStore.com. With all the things happening in the world, now is the time to get storable food. The elites are doing it. The government's doing it. It's insurance you can eat. They want to make us dependent.